Hey guys, welcome back to Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel. My name is Leon Chen and today we have another unboxing and overview for you. Today we're going to be showing you our Z170X Designare motherboard. Again, that's not a mispronunciation or misspelling. It's actually a word taken from an Italian root which represents designer. So as you guys can see or guess, this board is actually focused for our designers out there high-end desktop users or content creators. Those of you guys that like to do some YouTube or Twitch work, uh, that's definitely something you guys want to consider. But keep in mind, this isn't only good for that. It's also good for gaming or overclocking if you need to do so. So we're going to look around the box to show you the different features that Gigabyte has to offer for this board. And we'll take everything out as we've done previously before to show you the accessories that come with this board as well as the board itself. All right, so let's have a look right here. So you can actually see this board has the Z170 chipset logo. So we know that it supports the Intel 6th generation processors. Right here it shows DDR4 4000 plus megahertz XMP ready. So of course make sure that the modules that you purchase from your retail or uh, your store, your local store, that it is on our AVL list or they're certified to support those speeds. Not only that, right here you can see that we have the USB 3.1 Type-C. We have triple NVMe PCIe SSD support. We have 100 watt power delivery as well as Gigabyte's exclusive RGB ambient surround LED. And of course some other features that we'll cover when we turn to the back of the board of the box. <clears throat> so right here you can actually see for the Z170X Designare motherboard, Earlier we were talking about that USB 3.1 in Type-C. Now right here what we're showing is we support 32 gigabits per second even though that the protocol only requires 10. So transferring from your desktop PC over to your, uh, your portable drive or your thumb drive, uh, you have a lot of bandwidth or additional room to wiggle around there if needed. We also support that triple NVMe PCIe SSD in RAID 0. So this board's able to RAID Intel 750 drives. And basically we've done some testing and we've showed it off at our booth this year at Computex 2016. And we're basically able to transfer in within, within 10 seconds a file size as big as a DVD from your, the desktop PC to an external drive. Uh, all in a matter of seconds. Right here, it's showing the Gigabyte exclusive ambient surround LED where we have LEDs around all parts of the board. And not only that, one of the additional features that we have available is an LED pin header that allows you to control or synchronize your LED, uh, LED strips for your chassis. So that gives you a more synchronous look of the board itself as well as the feel for uh, the chassis also. We have dual hybrid fan headers. So with a lot of users trending more towards water cooling, they require different types of pumps that use PWM to control the pump speed. Now with our hybrid fan headers, you're able to use both PWM as well as voltage calibration to do what you need to do if you have any legacy fans or any um, air cooling on it that uses voltage calibration. Not only that, we have a dual armor with ultra durable design. You guys might have seen some of our one piece stainless steel metal shielding previously with our PCIe slots in, uh, when the 100 series first launched. And with this generation, we have more of that on the DIMMs as well. And of course, we have our NVMEs, uh, our U.2 support on board, our M.2 support, as well as dual Intel LANs. We have uh, the best spacing for multi-graphics support for two-way graphics, as well as audio and high-end long lifespan Dura Black solid capacitors. Uh, one of the other things that I'd like to point out is the anti-sulfur resistor that Gigabyte now includes on their motherboards. So users before would have to actually RMA or replace a full, a complete board or the whole board just because a resistor. Uh, is damaged. So with ha by having anti-sulfur resistors on the board, it adds an extra meaning to ultra durability. So it gives users the ease of mind that their board won't, won't malfunction because of a small resistor error or issue. So let's take the board out with the accessories and we'll see what we have inside.
All right, now that we have everything out, let's have a look to see what it's in the box. So we have a padded rear I.O. right here for you. We have cable management, uh, Velcro ties, so you can actually make sure all the cables coming out of your PC are all bundled together so you don't have all that cable clutter. We have multiple packs of SATA cables. So uh, there's two given here, one with a right, uh, right angle connector and one with a straight connector, and there's two. So a total of four SATA cables are provided, two of each. We have the G connector, which, we got, which we've shown several times, that allow users to actually connect the front panel headers directly to this cable or connector and slot it right into the motherboard. We have an SLI bridge for NVIDIA graphics cards. We have a multilingual installation guide, as well as the driver disk and utility disk, and the user's manual. And right here, we actually have a cable um, for the RGB pin headers. And this cable actually allows you to connect to the pin headers on board, um, on board your motherboard, and connect the other end to your third party or aftermarket case LED pins, LED strips to synchronize the colors as well as the patterns uh, for your overall, for your whole system. We have an ultra durable case badge. And lastly, we have some stickers that allow you to attach it to your SATA cables. A total of seven stickers are provided, and you can write different things on it, such as your boot disk for your HDD, or you might even want to put a storage drive or drive D or E or F, so you can actually label and organize your hardware with the software side of your system. So that's very useful for users that want to stay organized. So let's clean this up a little bit, and we'll look, take a closer look at the board. All right, so let's take a closer look at the board. Um, right at the top, you can, well, overall, you can actually see the board is all in black. It has some blue on it, so very neutral colors. Right at the top, you can see that uh, CPU power. It's a 2x4, so it has enough power. So if you need to do any overclocking, it is very possible. And, <clears throat> and right here, you can see the multiple fan pin headers. So you have one for your CPU fan, as well as the CPU optional for the pump. Uh, if users, as, as more and more liquid coolers are coming out into the market, or if users wanted to trend that way, they can use one of the pin headers for the fan on the radiator and another for the pump on the CPU. Uh, we also have the power button right here for quick debugging if you're testing the system outside of the chassis. We also have a debug LED uh, for users that might run into any issues and they need some help troubleshooting. This LED will actually help give you the different error codes whether it is that your memory isn't seated properly or your CPU isn't installed correctly. We have a quick OC button. Next to that, the reset button and a clear CMOS switch. <clears throat> As we move down, you can actually see that there's a strip here for the LEDs. And this is actually what we're mentioning around uh, what we're mentioning for Gigabyte's exclusive ambient surround LED. Of course, on this board, it's an RGB feature, and you have LEDs around the left side of the board, the right side where the amp up audio zone is, as well as between the DIMM slots and the PCIe slots. So definitely a lot of LEDs on the board to give you that customized look and feel, uh, whether you have different patterns going or just different lights overall. As we move down, you can see that we have the 24 pin ATX power, USB 3.0, and right next to that, another system fan header, and below that, you see this GPIO here. This is actually used for users that want to install additional Thunderbolt 3 add-on devices. So if they wanted to install an add-on card or if they wanted to install a front panel bay, they can actually connect that uh, device to the pin header here, and the board will recognize it as a Thunderbolt device. So let's turn it around so you can see the side of it, and you can see the different SATA ports and connectivities for storages that we have. So right here, you can see we have two, four, and then we have another two here vertically mounted SATA ports, so a total of six SATA ports, but we also have SATA Express, so two SATA Expresses, just keep in mind if you're gonna use that SATA Express, it's actually gonna populate its respective SATA ports, so both of them, okay? 
Right above that, we have this port here that might be unfamiliar to several of you guys or a few of you guys out there. This one's actually the U.2 port. Now, the U.2 has a transfer speed of about 32 gigabits per second compared to the SATA, which is only at 6, so a lot faster. Um, and it's used for uh, drives such as Intel's NVMe, uh, NVMe 750 drive that's currently out on the market. All right. And as we move to the bottom of the board, you can see that we have the front panel headers. Earlier, we were talking about that G connector that makes it easy for you to install your front panel cables directly onto the G connector and then inserting it into this block right here. We have another set of system fans, two USB front panel pin headers, TPM header, and this one's uh, and these four pins here also correlate with our ambient surround LED. Basically, what these four pin headers allow for is a synchronization between the lighting and the patterns on the board, along with um, the LED case uh, LED LED strips inside your case. So if you guys bought any third party or aftermarket LED strips that you want to synchronize uh, with the board's RGB, you can do so by connecting to these four pin headers. And to the right a little bit more, we have our front panel audio headers. And of course, our amp up audio zone, which we're using high end uh, audio capacitors. And this part is actually lit up just to signify and separate the digital from the audio side of the board. Now, as we move up, you can see that the PCIe slots are here. And on the PCIe slots, this time around, we have uh, ultra durable uh, dual armor. So we've, we've protected the DIMM slots by giving it shielding as well this time. But the dual armor also signifies the, uh, the change in the PCIe slot where we have that bracket, that anchor or double locking bracket on the back. So you can see there's some dips here that are, that are a lot thicker. And basically what it is, is it's an anchor or metal bracket that shoots through the top of the PCIe slot. And that's the first locking mechanism. And as it goes to the back, it's soldered on to keep that card, uh, keep the slot tight and fit against the board. So when you're using heavier graphics cards for high definition uh, content, or even if you wanted to do VR with some of the newer cards that are heavier, it'll actually protect the card um, and the slot itself, okay? So that's one of the things. One of the other things, you can actually see the spacing between the slots are a little bit wider than normal. So this is what Gigabyte has done to actually provide a better durability for the components for your system. Not only does it give room for the cards to breathe as, as you're using multi-graphics mode, but allows it to dissipate heat because it has more airflow in between two of the cards. So you actually prevent any thermal throttling as well as prolonging the life of your components. You can see right here, this is also, uh, like we mentioned, even though the board is focused for designers or, and content creators, we have a turbo B clock chip for overclockers if they wanted to do any overclocking. And right above that, we have an M.2 slot, which supports uh, 22 in width and 110 in length. And you can see that it has some different settings here. You can actually use the 42, the 60, or the 80, which the screw hole is already set for. All right, so let's turn the board to the rear I.O. so you guys can see what other inputs this board has. Right at the bottom here, we have some gold plating, uh, gold plated audio jacks to prevent any from tarnishment and better conductivity. It has an optical as well. It has two, uh, two sets of two USB 3.0, giving you a total of four right here. And right above that, you have dual Intel NICs, an HDMI port for display out, a display port for display out, two type C ports uh, for USB 3.1, and of course, a future feature upgrade, as well as a mini display port in. Now what this mini display port in is, it can actually take a dedicated uh, signal from your dedicated graphics card or discrete card and route it through to the motherboard through the mini display port in and out through another connector that enables you to power a uh, display for future devices. We also have a PS2 port for legacy devices or other keyboard or mice that you might be using and a, an additional two USB 2.0s. So, all in all, right here, you can actually see there's a total of six USB ports. On the front pin header count, we've counted uh, 
one of the USB uh, 3.0s, two of the USB 2.0s, so that's a total of six. So on this board total, there's 12 USB ports capable. Now we've gotten a lot of feedback from our YouTube viewers and fans out there, and you guys always have the question of how many fan, uh, fan or pin headers does this board have for fans and pumps? So we're gonna do a quick count for you guys. We have two right here on the top, one for the CPU, one being a CPU optional. We have one more on the side right here as a system fan, another one on the bottom right here, another system fan, and of course, one more to the side of the uh, rear I.O. So that's a total of five. So two on the top, one on the side, one on the bottom, and one on the opposite side right there. So a total of five system fans for you users to use. So that basically wraps up our unboxing and overview for the Z170X Designair motherboard. If you guys like what you guys saw, be sure to like this video, subscribe to Gigabyte's Motherboards and Bricks channel to find out more information about our upcoming products. If you guys want to know more about the promotions and contests that we host, be sure to like our Facebook page. And my name again is Leon Chen, and thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.